The very thread of life in old growth coastal rainforests depends on the annual flush of nutrients brought in by the salmon from the sea. The bodies of these millions of dying fish provide the nutrients which feed young salmon, insects, birds, plants, bears, wolves, and other carnivores. Carcasses, which are dragged back into the forest by wolves and bears over the years, provide nourishment for the trees, which are generally growing in poor, leached soil. This life-giving cycle of nutrients, however, is threatened by man's greed, and many of the individuals and species of the old growth forest and of the coast are in danger because the salmon are disappearing. One of the major causes of salmon decline, apart from habitat destruction, was the growth of the highly mechanized and efficient seine fleet, to the point where it was capable of devastating an entire salmon run on a major river like the Fraser in one opening. This wall of nets down Johnson Strait and the inside passage formed a sieve through which very few fish could escape unless the DFO continuously cut back on the opening times for the saners. When saners bring a big load of fish over the rollers, there is a tendency for the fish to be damaged or crushed. Because the fish is often bleeding and damaged and is stored in a mixture of ice and brine, it is considered generally to be of a lower quality than that taken from trollers or gill netters where the fish are dressed and stored on ice or flash frozen. Everything in the net, including high risk species such as coho and chinook, and even entire minor endangered runs swimming amongst larger runs are all pulled over the rollers together. This means there is always a chance of one boat indiscriminately wiping out a complete minor run in one set. In the past, if there was too great a load of fish to pull over the rollers, they were brailed. Brailing doesn't damage as many fish, but takes more time, and thus the fishermen can't set their nets as frequently. The saners are also permitted to fish for herring during the lucrative herring row fishery. This fishery is considered an environmental travesty by many biologists who fear that the herring, which form a major part of the food chain for much of the marine life on the coast, including the salmon, is being wiped out. In an effort to save endangered coho and chinook stocks and to make the salmon seine fishery more selective, the DFO has made brailing mandatory. Salmon pulled up in the braille are placed on a sorting tray, which allows for the removal of coho and chinook, which are then placed in a revival tank. One of the main problems facing these coho and chinook is scale loss. Anything greater than a 10% scale loss will compromise the fish's osmoregulatory ability and eventually will kill it. The problem with this type of revival and release program is that it doesn't prevent damage to the fish when they are repeatedly caught and there is no way of ensuring the crews comply unless there is an observer on board. Generally crews will do what is quickest and most expedient to get the net back in the water as fast as possible. Another problem facing juvenile salmon is predation by warm water species such as mackerel and barracuda which are being brought into our waters by El Nino and ocean warming. This year's fishing season was nothing short of a catastrophe for many of our small fishing communities. Closures for the threatened coho species were expanded because of record temperatures in the Fraser to include sockeye runs. It is ironic that the provincial government commissioned Brian Peckford to hold an inquiry into what went wrong with the fishery this year when it is well known that provincial policies regarding destructive logging practices next to salmon rivers and streams has been a major contributor to the decline of salmon runs in the province and that after logging the temperatures of these logged rivers and streams increases dramatically during the summer. Slides such as this which scour out creeks and streams down to the bedrock are common in areas where clear-cut logging has taken place on steep slopes. 
This slide has dumped thousands of tons of rock, mud, and sand into a major fish river. All this rock, gravel, sand, and mud fills in the deep pools and buries the spawning beds. Slides and debris torrents such as this have filled in many of the pools lower down this river. This used to be one of the big, slow-moving pools steelhead and salmon like to hide in. It is now a shallow rapid and may even flow under the gravel and rock in the summer. During many recent summers, this important salmon river, like many logfish streams, now flows completely under the rocks and gravel which were flushed down by winter storms from steep, clear-cut logging further upstream. This, of course, spells disaster for salmon and a host of other aquatic species. Here a forestry backhoe was brought in to try to dig a channel so that salmon, pooling at the mouth of the river, could get up to spawn. It was, however, too late for the many salmon fry trapped in pools, which simply dried up, leaving them to perish.